right off the bat, I just want to get into what is a yoni massage because like I need to know. Hi guys, welcome to Foreplay Podcast, a safe place for all things sex. Remember, if you're ready for sex, you're ready to talk about it. Welcome to Foreplay Podcast. Hello. Hello. You are Yoni Massager, Sex Tantra. Pre-Protector Jedi. Okay. (laughs) Well, we're excited to have you on Foreplay Podcast. I'm super happy to be here. Thanks Mm -hmm. for having me. Right off the bat, I just want to get into what is a yoni massage because, like, I need to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good question. A yoni massage is like a shamanic journey using your body, specifically your vagina. Has anyone heard of ayahuasca or having an ayahuasca retreat journey, whatever? Anyone done it? No. So it's an ayahuasca journey through your vagina. And it's so oh. cool. Yeah. So the body stores trauma. And wherever the, like, it stories inside of you. Uh, this is a really good uh, storage device. But some of the stuff is lodged in your body as well. If you've had some kind of sexual trauma, and pretty much every single human on this planet has had sexual trauma because no one's learned anything about boundaries from a young age or consent, then you will store that story, emotion, trauma in your genitals. For women, it's quite specific, it's inside. And I do four sessions, and I do four because I split up the sessions so it all doesn't happen all in one go, and you get to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So the first one is a Yoni dearmoring session, and I use a thing called trigger point release where I, like, I'm known as the Yoni whisperer. So I feel in the Yoni, and I do the left uh, one side and then the other side. And I work my way. Like I, I will just feel into where the tension is and then hold it. And then the um, m- muscles start to spasm and release. And then I go a little bit deeper. And then I can feel a, ri- a little rice-like grain. And then that spasms and releases and it's gone. So I trace to see where the other one is. And then this whole process goes all the way around the yoni. Every time the muscles, because it feels really hard in it. It feels like wet marble. The inside of the yoni shouldn't feel like a hard, tense thing. It should be soft. It shouldn't be painful when you're penetrated. Um, It shouldn't be numb down there. Um, A lot of people are, and a lot of people haven't experienced any form of deep, profound pleasure. And you, with this yoni dearmament technique, it's like going into a very tight, tense, defensive space. And I use this technique to open up the yoni like a flower. Wow. And wow. then through that process, the woman, is, and every woman is different. So a lot of people would be screaming and crying and letting out a lot of emotions, especially a lot of stories, um, memories of sexual assault or abuse or verbal or anything. Usually a program now it's installed inside of them <clears throat> in a vulnerable um, <clears throat> space like a, a sexual assault or something like that. And that's blocked them from uh, fully feeling and expressing themselves as a, as a human being and as a sexual woman. Uh, if you block sexual energy, then you block life force energy. And if you block that, you end up becoming a little bit more like this and not fully expressive. So Yoni dearmoring is one thing. Yoni mapping is the next thing where it's literally a hands-in experience. And I show them the uh, the pleasure of the outside of the Yoni, uh, the the clitoris just being not just the tip of the unicorn horn, but there's a whole shaft there. And then like all the other stuff around it. And then the internal extension of the clitoris, which is the G spot. And beyond that is the A spot. And from there, the umbrita, the uh, the nectar of life, can be released, which is squirting. Ninety eight percent of women can squirt. That's pretty much almost everyone. Uh, and then underneath that is the kundalini area, is the tailbone from the inside, where lots of sexual energy is stored. Uh, if, if you have lower back pain, sometimes you can release that because that, that releases the sexual energy and you can start moving energy through your body. And then the next session after the trauma's been released, after the 
uh, the mapping of the yoni, so the brain and the uh, yoni start to connect. And then I show women how, like, women say, I'm really numb, down there. Uh, mainly because guys or whoever uh, go down there and they want to go in there straight away, hard and fast, quick as possible, and then just get the dick in there and then fuck, and then they masturbate themselves uh, to <laughs> orgasm. And women don't really say much. Uh, guess what guys like? We like it hard and fast and we want to, because we're goal oriented and we know how to get what we want really quickly because we, we're just guys. We just figured out our bodies super quick. It's up to women to figure out their bodies and tell us what to do because we're guys and we know what we like. And that's why we touch your vagina straight away because we like our penis touch straight away. Apparently, you guys don't like that. And it takes an empowered woman to go, whoa, 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 whoa. How about you start with just some kissing? How about uh, maybe light touches around the neck? How about a massage? I do a massage. I need to open up my heart so I feel safe so my yoni can open up. Oh, you can give me a breast massage. No, no, not like that. Not grabbing. A breast massage. Mm -hmm. An actual massage. You know, something. There you go. No, no, you mean, here you go. You just, uh, let me do it for you. Like this. Yeah, you get it? And that's it to me. Oh, yeah, now you're figuring it out. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like training a puppy. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, you have to know what to do because, you know, we're just guys. You tell us what to do in a nice way, we'll do it. Because mm -hmm. guess what? Every man wants to be a, a god in bed. And guess how many people are? Just me. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because I just ask what they want. So what do you like? It kind of touches. So that's my job. So basic. It's easy doing what I do. I can give any woman who suffers from anorgasmia, which is the inability to have an orgasm, an orgasm. Because all I have to do is just press the right buttons in the right way, and I don't know how to press them. Hey, how do you press your own buttons? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell me. Like, I first of all, I have to clear. Um, have you? Can you have orgasms by yourself? And pretty much ninety-nine percent of them can. Mm -hmm. I'm like. Okay, then my job's easy. So how do you do it? Okay, got you. It's true. I um, will get into this, but I had uh, like a sexual experience and it is, it just really reassured how little guys actually know how to pleasure a woman. Like he was like, nobody, nobody's told me no, no. these things before. Like, yeah. So it was just like the most honest, open conversation with a first sexual experience and it just like paved the way for all of the nonsense of like like mediocre sex it could have just been so much better like I remember the time when I was having sex and someone said stop and I was like why and I was like I don't like it like that and I would obviously say oh no one else has complained and it takes one person to stop that pattern mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it takes an empowered woman to say I actually like it like that so that's what I teach in my sessions, the second session. I get women to understand their bodies. I get them to figure out what they like. Like, do you like firm earth touches? Or do you like air touches? Mm -hmm. Or do you like fire touches? Or do you like <laughs> watery touches? Like, or all of them. Or all of them. <laughs> and then I do loads of stuff inside of the yoni. Like, do you like pulsing, round? Like, I do a lot of stuff for women to figure out what they like. Then, when they're home or with a, a lover, they could tell that person what they like. So it's an educational thing. Literally, an educational... I, I'm teaching a woman about their body, and I'm a guy. So it's weird, but it works because they have to end up with guys. Or they're lesbians and they don't have to. Then they actually get the tools to play to another woman. So I teach them how to squirt. This is the Anubis. Um, I teach them, like, it's, I love working with lesbian bisexual women because with the tools I provide them, they could provide pleasure to another woman. And I, I identified myself as a lesbian for pretty much all my life, so uh, I really love working with that type of energy. Then the first, third session, this is a long answer, uh, is a Shakti surrender session, and that's after all the trauma being released and know what they want, they just surrender, then they, I basically just take them on a ride. It's, uh, yeah, it's a journey. And then on the fourth session, I just basically, I've subliminally been doing the same thing over and over again 
which is asking them six questions. What is your intention? Uh, what are your fears? What are your desires? What are your boundaries? Do you have any STIs and what does this mean to you? Uh, it's a great big container, so it's easy for me to navigate. Obviously, I have a website, so they know what they're getting themselves into. It's very clear. And they fill in the client intake form. Uh, and the final session is basically they become the space holder. So they, we co-create a space together. And that, hopefully, will be a good enough imprint for them to take and use to create tantric rituals with future partners. It's a process. Okay, can we go over the six things? Because we did this the other day, and it was it's just so beneficial for starting, especially with a new partner, when mm. you're like, when you're kind of like, okay, we have a sexual energy, but let's like create a safe space now. Okay, can you just repeat the six things? Sure. Um, in a relationship, I mean, I use this for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because because basically, I need to feel safe and I need to relax my nervous system around someone else and I need to trust them. So the first one is, what is your intention for this relationship? So we we talk about you know shared visions and dreams. Uh, what are your fears? We've all been fucked over, so you know there's fears. Uh, what are your desires? I have very specific desires because I I work with sexual energy and I'm a sacred sexual Jedi and I like to move my body and I like using other people's bodies to get buff. So I want to, you know, have someone I could uh, create content with, but also like, I've got a list of things. I, like when I choose a partner, I want someone that I could grow with and build an empire with. Uh, next one is boundary. This is a, a really uh, difficult one because a lot of people don't know what their boundaries are. Then it's sexual health. Um, sexual health is really important. So, have you got anything? When was the last time you got tested? And have you had unprotected sex? Then the final one is, um, what will this uh, relationship mean to you? So, someone might see it as a uh, looking for their twin flame, uh, and another one, a marriage and everything. Another one might be, I just broke up with my girlfriend and I want some intimacy or something like that. I don't know. So then, oh. you you just want to like you know be clear mm. expectations. Six questions, the rules of engagement. Those are really, wow. really cool. I think it's a good way to keep yourself on track. I feel like especially because uh, entering a new relationship, whether it be physical or emotional, can often get really like distracting and like exciting. So to have kind of those <laughs> principles or those those moments to like check in and ground yourself, that's, that's cool. I think they're just really important conversations that everyone should be having, you know all of the like stories going on in your head when you're having a new experience with someone, it just like leaves them all out there. Yeah. And it's like, you go, I go. Yeah. And then we like get it out there. We move on. And just like speaking up for what I'm thinking in my head has been such a barrier with me that it's just trying to get past that. It just lays it all out there and just helps when you're maybe a little bit nervous, especially mm. with, when you're with a new partner. So I yeah. think, yeah, I try and use those every time I have a new new partner yeah. or yeah. checking in with your current partner. There's a, a new one that I learned, uh, which is aftercare. Just talking about how you want to be seen in public or um, how you want to communicate after, like, the relationship is over and things like that. Well, Ada, you were, were going to comment on the aftercare thing? Yeah. Okay. I thought that it was cool because I think the way that I um, view aftercare is always usually like immediately following sex or intimacy of any sort. So the way that you put it into perspective, even like post relationship, what how we can view aftercare, I thought that was really cool. I wanted to transition a little bit and see if we have anything going on for Beat Your Meat. Beat Your Meat is our segment when we talk in, about masturbation tips or new toys and things like that. Like anything that's kind of like new, um, I would say masturbation centralized kind of. So if you have anything to add, absolutely. It's been a while since we have met to chat. So you guys haven't been able to see the stuff that I got for Valentine's Day. So I wanted to take a moment and share a little bit of the goodies that we got. First things first, I think you guys have these. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, like the under the mattress uh, wrist (laughs) cuffs and ankle cuffs. I got those. So I kind of, I set it up 
for those who don't have them, this is what mine kind of look like. We've got a little like velvet wrist cuff and it's red, of course, because my partner knows me. Super soft, Velcro, pretty sturdy. And then the straps go underneath your mattress. Um, let me okay, pull wait, it out for you. So this, yeah, Are the straps, okay, I have, I've had multiple pairs of those. Are the straps yeah. long enough to go under the whole, the entirety of the mattress? Yes. Okay, good. They are. So they're super adjustable. If you look, this would, this length of this piece would go from, let's say the left side of my bed to the center to meet the middle piece. Um, but there's a whole like extra length here to adjust it. So like there's plenty of room to work with. We kind of set it up and then my partner went around the bed, like tightening each strap. So that was like a fun little experience. The tension was a really nice feeling. Very like, I don't know, it just added a lot of anticipation and that was really fun. They have a pretty good hold. I love the sensation of being restrained. Super, super fun. Um, especially if you're playing with like sensory deprivation, I feel like it's such a fun way to add just to heighten everything, add a little bit of sensation. So great, great, great time. Oh, my partner just texted me. You can use them on door frames. <laughs> um, oh, you can set it up that way too. Yeah. yeah. I've tried I've tried it on a door frame, Have actually. You? Actually, I feel like I remember the story, but that sounds fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. Was it worth it on a door frame? Uh, yes, it was. It was nice on a door frame because it was in a threesome. So... Oh. It was like, yeah, I had a uh, wrist, but I didn't use the ankle ones. So it was oh, just okay, the okay. wrist on the door frame. Still, like you get that feeling of, you know, I don't know. You feel restrained nonetheless. It doesn't have to be full body. I think that's a cool thing about them too, is because you can like take them apart and fashion them in whatever, whatever way you see fit. You can kind of use them anywhere, you know, definitely would recommend. I have another thing though which this one I'm like more excited about. I don't know why it's not even for me, but um, so I got my partner um, uh, masturbation sleep. Ooh. A little Ooh. tango one. I dropped it. Okay. So it's covered in cat hair, <laughs> but it's a really, listen to it. Hey. Um, can you hear it? Are you digging it? No. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a squishy dick thing. <laughs> Super squishy. <laughs> exactly. It's a squishy dick thing. Um, It's got little shapes in it. It's made of, it's not silicone. I don't remember what it's made of. It's going to bug me now, but it's a very, very soft texture. It's reusable. Of course, you just wash it out. It's got like some, can you see inside of it? <laughs> um, Super, super cool. fun. Super fun toy, but it's a I'm Tango so curious. Geo, I think. The Tango, wait, what was the name? Tango Geo, I think. Okay. And what has um, uh, your partner, can't remember if we're saying names, but has he tried it yet? Yes, he's tried it. This is, he's going to hate me for exposing him. I actually don't think so. But um, you see how there's like a little <laughs> hood at the top? <laughs> this yeah. is flat when we bought it. <laughs> um <laughs> Damn! I used it. Damn. I used it on <laughs> right? I mean, um, I used it on him when we bought it. <laughs> yeah. um, I used it on him when we bought it, and it was it was kind of crazy because I was like using two hands to like use it to stroke his penis. I kind of wish the top was cut off so you could like give oral um, while you were while you're using it. But nonetheless, wow. I kind of had to push to keep it on <laughs> otherwise it would just fly <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was like a slingshot I swear it was oh. so crazy but definitely worth it so I'd recommend it it's a pretty high price point I think this was like 60 something dollars so it's like a little bit more expensive I feel like as far as um just masturbation sleeves go um but a cheaper option would be like the tanga egg or you could just get some I don't know the, the brand names, but I know I've bought masturbation sleeves for like 15 bucks before, but uh, it was cool to kind of get a fun one, you know? And that's, uh, that's worth cool. $60? I would say so. I don't have a penis that it's being used on, but it seems like he enjoys it. So, but we, yeah, I just got a thumbs up. Worth the $60. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyone else got to beat your meat? I have kind of a funny story. It's not super like crazy but it made me laugh so yeah back story is I've been having some issues with my birth control lately so I've been 
basically bleeding nonstop for like a month now. And I've been getting cramping anyways. So that has been a nightmare. And I was just really horny one day. And I was like, you know what? I don't give a flying fuck if I'm bleeding. And I, I know when I have orgasms, my cramps get worse. I know sometimes they'll be like, it'll help you. No, no, bitch. Absolutely not. It feels like someone is ripping my uterus out after I have an orgasm anyways, but I didn't care. I was like, I'm going to come if it kills me, if it fucking (laughs) kills me. (laughs) So I get into the shower. I'm sweating because I'm in pain. I'm soaking wet. I've got (laughs) like, (laughs) (laughs) I love, and I'm like, all right, bitch, you're going to, you're going to enjoy this. All right. And I did. And it was great. And then afterwards, and it sucked a lot, but I was like, it's been over a month since I've had an orgasm and I'm going to kill myself. So yeah. give me some serotonin, please. Yeah. Anyways, that's, yeah, that's the whole story, but yeah, we're, we're barely hanging in over here, boys. <laughs> Oh God! Oh no! I, I thread. Okay, and did I, the serotonin? Did you feel Miss Serotonin? Did she come to you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> not. What about the pain in the uh, in the uterus? Did it was it painful or was it pleasurable? It was pleasurable at first, and then I would say like ten to twenty minutes afterwards, then I my cramping got a lot worse. But you know. Sometimes you just have to take one for the team. And I did. <laughs> so and I did. God damn it. Yeah. Birth control is, it's such a, a bitch. finicky thing. Yeah. I don't miss her. But honestly, don't her. I don't regret being on it because I, as you all know, experienced the worst symptoms ever. And now it's way more manageable. And my doctor says the bleeding and cramping should go away once my body gets used to it but because I stopped taking like the placebo pills. So yeah. I just start like jump into the next pack because I don't want a period because we were talking about it. I don't know if it was last pod or the pod before about how birth control, when you bleed on birth control, it's like a fake period. And I was like, so why would I, why would I want to experience that? It's not even telling me if I'm pregnant or not. So I said, fuck that. I'm not doing that shit. (laughs) Um, But I didn't know that when you start doing that, it takes your body like two to three months to regulate the hormones. So I could be bleeding for another like two months, but it's fine. It'll be worth it in the long run, I hope. Yeah. (laughs) But honestly, besides the bleeding and the cramping, it, it doesn't really affect like my mental health. Well, we already know that's in the toilet, so... It, it didn't make it worse and it hasn't really affected my libido. I would say it just is giving me like cramping and stuff. So not, not all, it's, it's, it's a trade-off that I'm okay with making. So thank you for sharing that. Um, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. I really hope the cramping goes away. Cause that is, yeah. It's super annoying to have your uterus cramping yeah. all day, all day long. Yeah, it's not a good time, but it could be worse. So I guess count your blessings. <laughs> Before we move on, does anybody else have anything else that they'd like to add for Beach of Meat? Okay, so I actually met this um, uh, this guy at, Sha- at the Shaft show. Where, so, okay, I'm just going to paint the scene for you. Okay, so Shaft is facilitating. Um, we are all... Uh, moving around, making cat noises. And, and when I say cat noises, I mean like, meow. Like we're like, like. It's a cat orgy. It's a cat orgy. Yeah. And so it's just as like interesting as it sounds in your head. It, it was that. It's that. <laughs> so we're like roaming around. We're all like on the prowl, <laughs> making these cat noises with each other. And then me and this guy were like, kind of like exchanging energy and it's like very sexual and like very enjoyable and so the energy is there and then we continue like we just like hang out a few times after and then we're like ready to I don't know do some sort of sexual encounter and it just wasn't 
what I, it wasn't what I felt when we were both pretending to be cat, you know, like, oh. in the moment it was like, okay, it was like me on top of him, straddling him. And he's like moving my hips is all for his pleasure. Like, it was like not us being like cat together it was like him getting pleasure from my body on top of him and me just being like what the fuck and this is where I didn't say anything and um we kind of continue and it gets better but uh, then we go back to uh his place and again we're like it's enjoyable but it could be so much better and we have like good energy together so if I had just stopped when we were when he was like moving my hips and I'm kind of going like what the fuck if I had to can we just like I don't know either breathe together or like just like body on body for a second and not you grabbing my hips and like like me riding you so I so I learned in that sexual encounter and it was really cool because she like facilitated a conversation with us three talking about when the energy shifted in that sexual experience. And he agreed. And he was like, I could feel it, but I had like no really idea that you felt that way. So it was a cool conversation to, to be able to have like a debrief with this Mm. person who I had the sexual encounter with and I didn't really enjoy it. And us both being like, if we had just like done some breathing together first or like stopped midway and like did some breathing or like checked back in with each other and been like, let's just explore each other's bodies a little bit more and like even put clothes back on or whatever and just like slow it down. It would have been so much more enjoyable because the the chemistry was there. Mm. And yeah, so I learned in that moment of the facilitating which was really fucking awesome that it's just like if you have that feeling champ and the guy is respectful like like chances are he'll be so receiving of it yeah. and just like so appreciative of you just being like okay this is not this is not right because it was like I don't know for us both it was like not bad but it could have been so much better and yeah and then a few days later we like made out again and so much better and let like we just kind of left at that so that was like the sexual encounter that ended up taking more energy than it ever gave me um but we were able to like have a debrief on the whole situation after so that was really cool and I've never been able to have a debrief with a new partner like one-time partner before so that was my just new beach of meat and masturbation I sleep with every night, so I haven't been masturbating. You should do a masturbation cycle together. Yeah. You know, the temples I run, we say, ends up masturbate together, stay together. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I feel like that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're in a space and that little voice is like saying to you, and it's usually stuck here, oh, this doesn't feel right. I should say something. Will you be empowered enough to say, hey, that's great, but how about we do it like this? I think because a guy never knows unless some like nonverbal cues doesn't work for guys. We can't read your mind. We can't read your body. We ha- have enough hard time reading our own body. You're just gonna have to tell us. I was just gonna say. I just feel like yeah, like in when you're having a one night stand with someone, um, you want it to be pleasurable for both of you, not just one person. And I think I've been in that situation where I get nervous and don't want to talk about what I'm feeling, but I think that's a really good takeaway to just step up. And if you want to feel good too, yeah. then you need to be empowered in the moment. Yeah. And it like, it really shows how like bossed up you are, mm. which that is what I'm going to take into my next situation where I'm feeling that it's like boss the fuck up. So especially so it's like levels out the playing field, you know, like say it. Yeah. Time for the ooey gooey. I was going to ask Shaft if he could just give us a few tips on how to uh, activate our kundalini 
and um, some tips for like <laughs> breath work type stuff or whatever, just to increase the pleasure when we're masturbating or increase the pleasure when we're having sex with a partner. Okay, easy. Yeah. So breath sound and movement is the most powerful thing to release trauma from the body, but also how to have more pleasure. At the end of the day, our bo brains, bodies, beings are designed for two things, avoid pain, feel pleasure. You can heal through pleasure. Tantra uses just three things, breath, your breath, uh, sound, moving sound, moving energy, and uh, movement. That's, that's how we move the energy for our body. So if you want to actually be, have more profound orgasms as a man, as a woman, and for women, uh, so there's, there's two types of orgasms. It's, well, there's eight types of orgasms for women, but there's two categories and they run up different nervous systems. There's the explosive orgasm and the implosive orgasm. The explosive orgasms are the clitoral and the vaginal. And they say in certain uh, schools that I attend, it depletes your energy. Um, but there's the profound ones that are the internal orgasms. So your, your G, G spot, your Kundalini area, anal orgasms, full body orgasms, valley orgasms. Um, so as a man, I also have that. I have the explosive orgasm, ejaculation, <clears throat> and then the implosive orgasm. I got my Kundalini. Sorry. So for those who don't know, what is, what does Kundalini mean? So basically, they are two little serpents uh, that live in the base of your spine. I don't think that got your shashumna, and then it bursts out your crown. Um, if you've seen the medical symbol in England, yeah. uh, there's a medical symbol, and it's like this star, and there's two snakes, um, yeah. and there's a crown at the top of it. So that is you know what uh, that. The that brings me back to, I don't know if you guys ever read Percy Jackson, <laughs> but there was um, Hermes. Uh, I don't, don't remember what. Hermes, Hermes yeah, that's them, exactly the one I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So <laughs> that's all the, <laughs> there's all ancient stuff. Um, yeah. It's all symbolism. Those snakes get activated from the root chakra and it hits every single um, major energy center of your body until it explodes out of there. Uh, the, like the spiritual journey is a bit like a computer game. It's opening each part of your chakra system to get superpowers. And um, like I paid 2,000 pounds to have my Kundalini activated and that's why I don't ejaculate anymore. Like I just went to a group and a lot of money, like I said. Uh, I just go uh, pay my way to enlightenment and I activated my body so I could uh, no longer, I don't need to ejaculate anymore. So I have the option to um, orgasm and orgasm and orgasm. So a, a hot tip for men and women is instead of like, oh, I'm tensing, 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 then you have that. How about slowing things down, man, woman, same thing. Be a bit like Sherlock Holmes and just like, to see where are the, act, like, you know, go hard and fast and then slow down and stop and go, where are the tingling sensations coming from? Um, in porn, they call Call it edging, so keep on edging. Mm -hmm. There's a number scale. Uh, 10 is ejaculation or orgasm. Zero is, you know, zero. Um, and then you've got one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Uh, play around the middle area of five, six, and seven. 7.5 is a good place to, like, really edge and, like, see where the tingles are coming from. For men, is you'd be surprised where your uh, orgasms are actually coming from. Give it a go. So uh, slowing things down, speeding it up, using the breath, relaxing the body. Um, so instead of tensing up, relaxing, breathing deeper, breathing into the heart. And if you're feeling like you're going to hit an explosive orgasm, start to sublimate the energy up to the heart or into the third eye or out your crown. Like almost seeing like your crown, like a lotus flower opening up. What would you say would be like a turning moment in your life that brought you on to um, sexual wellness, let's say, as a general topic and, and kind of had you pursue that? This one time at Burning Man, I just, I just <laughs> couldn't get drunk anymore. That was it. Like I just, yeah. my body couldn't take, I just couldn't get drunk. I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. 2014, I had my awakening. Um, 
And like I was going insane, like as a proper crisis. Like I didn't know who I was anymore because I wasn't drunk anymore. The first time I had sex over was at the age of 34. And then um, my, I, I saw, I started Googling this stuff. Like every time I was having sex, weird stuff was happening. Really weird stuff. Like I'd be seeing visions. I'd be hearing voices. Um, I would be seeing, if I tense inside of someone, I would see all this energy flowing through them and I'll turn blue and these giant angel wings will fly out their back fly out their back and I would check in with them after the sexual encounter and say hey there's a moment where this weird stuff happened and I felt all this energy and they'd be like oh, did that energy go out my back I'd be like yeah so these angel wings blowing out your back like and she's like yeah I felt that I was like what the fuck and then obviously I'm like Facebook what's going on am I going insane and people would say no your your light body's been activated your kundalini's been activated um your shaman i'm like it sounds like i'm becoming a superhero yay then you google this stuff like kundalini um kundalini rising third eye activation all this stuff and then thing appear things appear on youtube and i see this thing called um ralph smart infinite waters i start watching him and he said this key word the uh, key sentence which was you'll find the ones you love doing the things you love doing and my brain instantly said vaginas <laughs> start getting good at vaginas Chaz. i'm like okay <laughs> and then i went down the rabbit hole i became the world's best yoni masseuse and found tantra and everyone kept this is, this is a really 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 long story uh, so I won't take up too much of your time. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was an interesting journey. The word Tantra, the only massage appeared over and over again. Kundalini activation kept on appearing. And, and I, I just, has anyone seen the film Doctor Strange? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was my life. I had a major crisis. I went on this path of healing. Uh, and I met these gurus and sacred sexual Jedis and saw the most insane things. Nothing makes sense anymore. Uh, synchronicity started happening. Um, enlightened state started happening. I started seeing deities being possessed by gods and goddesses. Um, I started traveling the world and left my old job behind and basically became a sacred sexual Jedi. If you guys are into vaginas, um, look into a vagina. We're in, a, in Tantra, we call it uh, the yoni, which means sacred space in Sanskrit. And this is called, uh, this meditation, do it for 10 minutes, is called yoni gazing, where you just look at a vagina, the, the, the sacred space, and you just look. That's it. And then you start asking it questions, and it, it starts giving you an answer. Oh, uh, that's cool. It's a, it's a very old, old ancient practice. Um, tantric practice and one of the uh, questions I asked the great universe I call it was uh, what's the meaning of life and the great universe said to me is in the question uh, the meaning of life is to live a meaningful life through creation collaboration service and impact so that's just to create art to keep on creating art through that, you'll find your passion. Find out uh, other people who would want to create art with you and you start collaborating. And if you start collaborating in, together with other people and in communities, you end up having a bit of an impact. You're able to serve a community or humanity with your art because every person is unique and we all got these unique gifts. And uh, through serving, you end up having huge impact on the planet. You can also do ball gazing with ice. Like, did you know that testicles are con constantly moving all the time? Mm -hmm. And if you have ice and you drop it on the testicles, it's the It's fascinating. It's like a DMT That's experience. Ball gazing. <laughs> One more question. Can you tell us what Tantra means? Yes, I can. You could Google 10 questions you always wanted to ask a tantric sex guru for a five-minute video that reached <laughs> 40 million people for the best answer for what is tantra. Perfect. We'll link it down below. Quick. It's basically certain tools and practices that help you liberate yourself from the conditionings of first your parents, uh, the town you came from, the country you came from, and then the collective consciousness. So it's a 
tools for freedom through the body. Like tantra, like you can't learn tantra through this screen. You can't learn tantra through reading books. It's it's like um, you either give a kid a bike or you give a kid loads of tutorials, books, and other things on how to ride a bike, and they've never ridden a bike. You've got to fucking ride the bike to learn how to do it. But actually experience it through the body. It's like trying to describe love to someone who's never experienced love. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Anyone else got any questions? Have you got any questions for us? What is the color of your heart today? When you said that, I saw green, but I don't know what that means. That means that you're fully enlightened because the Anahata chakra is the color green. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And the trick about enlightenment is we're already all enlightened. We just choose not to be. Yeah. There you go. I kind of feel yellow. Yellow. Yellow too. Yeah, what is yellow? I mean, this is a chakra that is the uh, Manipura chakra of willpower, located in the solar plexus. Mm. Who, who, who hasn't? G, uh, have you said what color is your heart today? Yeah, mine's yellow. Maddie, what's yellow. yours? What about Maddie? Maybe this is me just being a pessimist, but the first thing that came to my mind was black. Um, now, yeah. The color of my heart before my awakening. I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're on this I journey used to together. Have a black heart and it's rotten to the core. And I, I always used to say I have a, a black heart and it's rotten to the core. Like I really I hated my for a long time. Oh. Yeah, like I said, lots lots of things to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I have therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you, Maddie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, what I did learn in uh, my Mayan uh, history lesson today is that mm-hmm. we always associate it with like like a dark energy or something like that, but it's actually like so beautiful and it's essential in yeah. order to see the light. So it's like you, the like the darkness, it means rest. It means that your spirit can rest, your body can rest, the earth can rest. And then if once you can see the darkness, you can then appreciate the light. So it's like this equilibrium going in a circle and they're both really beautiful. One is not bad. Mm-hmm. It just means that you have to experience this in order to see the light. And it's, it's not like a dark thing. It's just rest. So, you know, like maybe it's just needing a little rest. Well, so you can see the light. Well, the beautiful thing about the tantric path is it allows the darkness in. They say, uh, without the darkness, you cannot see the stars. And it's fully um, integrating all of those aspects. Like, I was dark as fuck. I wanted to kill myself for such a long time, suffering. I had so much mental illness and all. I had so many things wrong with me. But then they became my superpowers. In my like I guess spiritual spirituality I don't even know what I call it but I believe in this thing I call like shadow work like you have to process the things and the shit that you've been through in able to like move past them and to start living your life the way you're supposed to so you can't do that until you've worked through the things that are obviously affecting your life currently so it's like not an easy process, but it's something I know that I have to like go through. Um, so, yeah, I I think it's like it sounds similar, but I'm sure That's different culture. Yeah. All San Marco. Yeah, the shadow work. <sighs> and honestly, like I don't. There are stories that we've created, and the stories of where we've come from, the abuse that we've experienced, all of these different experiences that make us who we are we need to hold them and care for them and process them and give them attention so we can let them go so they're they're no longer a part of our identity they're just they're just a part of us i i always know what a tantra teacher's um biggest trauma is 
because there'll be a specialist in that field. Oh, um, I guess that's, that's all you can really do, you know, with your with your pain is try and heal it for someone else kind of thing. Be the be the person you needed when you were younger kind of vibes. So, mm. you know, nothing wrong with yeah. that. That's for sure. I have another question for you. <laughs> so what do you think you talked about? We've talked a lot about sex being healing, even just now we mentioned, you know, more often than not, we kind of throw ourselves into the ways that we needed to be healed. What would you say is your favorite thing about like sex and its correlation with healing? Like what does sexual healing mean to you? I guess I'm going to go a roundabout way and answer it in a very roundabout way. So if you swap the word sex to growth, Mm -hmm. I want to grow with that person. That's Mm -hmm. what sex means. So um, the definition of love and sex is the same for me. It's just uh, my body is just expressing it through the body. If you, like you guys are all cool because you're all cool. There's an old, old unicorn bubble of fabulousness that drags fabulousness. And there's also the other way around, which is if you, sur- um, before you diagnose yourself with stress, anxiety, depression, just make sure you're not surrounded by assholes. Like you're, you become the people you surround yourself with. So I use sex to get to the next level of assimilation. Like the tantric CEO woman didn't exist. For me, um, when I was a unicorn, I was mainly hanging out. Like, I was attract. I was the biggest energy. I was the most craziest out of everyone. So I was attracting more people like me. Uh, my target audience was drug addicted, um, daddy issued, incredibly insecure women. Because I was that. Like my daddy issues are like all over my internet. Like it's big. It was a big problem. I've healed that now because I took it to the next level. And I became a tantra teacher. So I started attracting tantra teachers, and I started having sex with tantra teachers to become a tantra teacher. And now it's like I want the tantric CEO woman, and now I'm attracting that because I decided that I want to get the fuck out of Tantra because everyone's also insane and find people who are a bit more grounded in the city who have a bit more of a masculine energy uh, but also have big impacts on the planet. So I would use <clears throat> sexual energy as sex with this, this person to, to get their code <laughs> and just through osmosis, pick up their skills, hang out with them, like learn from them. Um, they got something I want, which is um, a big impact on the planet and I want to know how to do what they got and I've got something that they want which is sexual healing so it's a, it's a like a good match and we know, we go into these relationships knowing we're there to grow together to get to the next level mm-hmm. to have bigger impact on the planet so sexual healing is um, knowing where you both want to grow and helping each other and supporting each other to get to the next level of the computer game I always say, surround yourself with better versions of yourself. So I, want, I want to be hanging out with other superheroes who could do badass shit that I can't do. So sexual healing, so you, in your experience, have placed yourself in intimate relationships with people who are more healed than yourself yeah. and can heal those parts within you? Yep. Can you heal those parts within you? It's just quicker. I, I just want a quickest way to get to where I want to get to. Um, one of my lovers, she had this big thing about shame. Her mom shut her down and um, she found it hard to express herself because shame was such a big thing imprinted on her, especially around her sexuality. Um, I was born without a thing called shame. I don't have it in my body. Like, for some reason, I just don't have shame. It's just not, just not in me. I was just born without it. Um, Muslim uh, conditioning and Muslim countries like Bangladesh, the whole foundation of that uh, society is built around shame. Sharom Naini is what my mum used to say all the time. Do you have no shame? And I'm like, no. (laughs) And like my shame stories, my uh, embarrassing stories got the most laughs at university. So I used to just tell my sex stories to everyone. This is why I overshare. Like I just, it's just ha- now I've got a business around sharing, oversharing. So 
I don't have shame in me. So just by having sex with me and just by being in my energy of not having any shame, she started to let go of her conditioning, her mom's voice around shame. She would just see me out and about, not really caring that much because right, it's just not in my body. And then she would pick up my habits. Luckily, you know, my mom sees it as a bad habit. I see it as a good habit. And she sees it as a good habit. Like the whole of Bangladesh hates people like me. But the rest of the world loves people like me. I also trigger the fuck out of people because I'm so liberated and free. And it is, you know, it's caused a lot of harm in my life because I just want to play and have fun. So uh, my lover, just by having sex with me, spending a lot of time with me, picked up my habit. And she was able to overcome shame in two weeks. And she's done a lot of work, like 10 years worth of work. It just got accelerated through hanging out with someone. That's all it is. Like, Tantra was not taught through books. It was taught through a guru and uh, students, like through the body, through osmosis, through hanging out with people. And that's how we, we grow. We, you need humans to heal humans. Like, we've been programmed in this new world where you got to love yourself, you got to take yourself out of the equation and, like, you got to hide and, like, be isolated. And, like, like, there's so much separation that, yes, self-love is a very beautiful thing, but there's or another thing of, like, taking yourself out of humanity and trying to heal yourself by yourself. It's just harder. It's just easier in collective spaces where, like, tantra festivals are amazing, where mm. we do collective healing. The Shaft Show, which I just took all of the... Uh, personal development stuff, therapy stuff, and turned it into a workshop. Cat orgies is a great example where you can practice your boundary. Like, you're able to feel energy straight away. If cats don't like something, they go, <laughs> and move on to someone else. So I figured out how do you overcome social anxiety? You get people to play, pretend they're a cat. Um, I get them to meditate about what is your power cat? Like mine's a black jag. And like people have their own black jags or cats. And then they have to like start embodying it. And straight away, there's no more fear. Like I figured it out. So they're able to go super quick into connection. And that's all we're craving at the end of the day. Like straight away in like five minutes, everyone's already, well, you were there. <laughs> like they, there's no more fear. Like, there's no more anxiety, there's no more shame, fear, or anything around sexuality or human connection. And that's why I do this stuff. I just want people to play and connect because it really helps your immune system. It really helps everything in your whole body. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for sharing all of that. I feel like I'm just like processing everything. There's so much to learn and I feel like you've been very informative. Has anybody else got any questions? No, but thank you so much for everything that you shared. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Comments, grief, and concerns say how to sensually oh. love and touch yourself. We kind of went into it, but Maddie? Okay, so I've been like trying to work on this lately ish I guess because I feel like I'm so programmed to be like just touch your clit that's all you have to do and I'm like no you don't have to just do that there's more you can do so I feel like I've been trying to explore more maybe just like sensual touches with myself like you know like feeling my body and like I don't know just appreciating myself in that sense what's your favorite place to be touched with a partner or like from myself just in general like what is your favorite where on your body do you like crave touch the most oh that's a really good question um I'm not a very touchy person um I've kind of figured that out over the years I'm just I'm not one of those people that's like oh like let me just hug and hang all over you so I feel like touch is something I definitely need to like work on um, and kind of unpack within myself as to why it doesn't make me uncomfortable, but it's just not something I like need. Great. Um, and I don't know where that stems from, but I, I really enjoy like my neck area being touched. Like Ooh. this area. Maddie, I've got, uh, I'd like to suggest something for you. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I invite you to start building a relationship with your yoni. Uh, when you start feeling, you know, cramps or anything, I really want you to go inside your womb. Uh, like, you've got womb wisdom. 
she will literally guide you everywhere once you tap into it. Like I, I got a conscious cock and he finds, he finds me all my partners. Like he's taken me literally all around the world for the last eight years. And, um, and he's never wrong. Mm-hmm. So you girls, all of you have got womb wisdom. You're, it's inherently wise. And once you start tapping into it, like, like a lot of us can speak from the heart. It's a hard practice, but we can speak from the heart. Like we, Dr. Joe Dispenza has scientifically proven that now. You've got your brain that will talk, your heart that will talk, uh, you've got gut instincts and it will get you out of trouble or feel things. And no one really talks about the sexy bit. Like that's intelligence down there. I've got two things that actually look, look like brains. And I, he talks to me. So Maddie, for you, I would love it if you started to uh, start voicing the emotions that's in your womb. Like when you start feeling this pain, like all of your wounds are talking to you right now. My dick's talking to me right now as well. We're just choosing to not listen to it. Mm-hmm. But also um, start to explore the internal pleasure of your womb space, like your yoni Like start to get to know the internal uh, connection of your G-spot and start to play there build a neurological pathway um, of your pleasure centers, of, of your brain to this area and start sending it love. Like that's yeah. essentially it. Um, start to um, bring your awareness and your consciousness to your womb and to pleasure that is more internal and um, just start exploring your body. You've been in your body for 23 years. Um, there's so much to explore. Yeah. And it's really great homework just to try and get yourselves more, you know, G-spot orgasms, squirting, uh, cervical orgasms. It's all, it's all there. You just got to figure it out. That's why you're in that body. And I think we did talk about this actually on a podcast not too long ago. I've never really, I, not okay, not that I don't believe in the G-spot because obviously it's there. I've, I've felt it. But I don't have this like Dr. Duffenberg, a male doctor found it for you guys. Because <laughs> you were gonna find it yourself, apparently. No, I just I've I've just never I don't know. It doesn't really do anything for me. So maybe just taking my time to learn that part of my body better. There's the ace spot, and that's way more pleasurable. Okay, so where do you find that? <laughs> tell me. I can tell you. So here's a little tutorial. Let's say vaginas here. <laughs> Did a little demo on my hand. So clitoris is there, and the internal extension of clitoris is just in there, which is a G spot. And that much of your uh, the finger that goes in. You should feel some rigid, uh, rigid um, texture like the top of the roof of your mouth. Mm-hmm. It's like quite rigid. That is texture, it's like spongy like tissue, and you can pulse it. And beyond there, you can start feeling something that's smoother, like the side of your mouth. That's the A spot. And if you do the Anubis in a certain way, bum, 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 um, you could release Amrita. Uh, which is uh, everyone everyone could release it. Yeah, guess what? I could also release it as well. I'm a man and I swear. Did you know that? Yeah. So um, there's all this stuff that is common knowledge for people like me, but the rest of the planet don't know about it. Yeah, I'm still on this one. So we do like this, but upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Come and here. Yeah, like if you want to make someone squirt, here's a little trick. Um, oh, yeah. You, um, <laughs> so let's say she's lying down and like, <laughs> okay, here we go. tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> if your hand's down on their black, like on the pubic bone, like on the bladder bit, and you pull the skin back, it tightens up the, uh, the end of the yoni and then it starts to stimulate the whole of the clitoris. This starts to stimulate the G spot. This starts to stimulate uh, the A spot, and this starts to stimulate the cervix, and these start to stimulate the the uh, the outer labia. So you've got full stimulation with the Anubis. So Maddie, feel that connection with your beautiful Yoni. Give her a name. Talk to her every day, and love yourself. You know what? I am gonna name her.
Hello, oh, no, no. And like, look at your yoni and say three things that you're grateful for. And um, yeah, just see what she has to say. It's quite interesting what she'll say. I, I swear they did that on Big Too Hot to Handle. Six. They had a uh-huh. Tantra guru come in and he made she made uh, all the girls in the villa like stand in these boxes and drop their bikini bottoms and then they would take a mirror and say like three nice things or whatever it was to their yonis it's a classic yeah. exercise um what did you say on i think it was too hot to handle the one where they can't have sex i'm gonna be on that really that's really? 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 a guru yeah i was gonna be one of the experts they interviewed me that's, oh, so, that's cool. so cool oh we'll link all your where to find you down below everyone go toss to the follow check out what you've got going on and thank you again for coming on our pod thanks for having me you guys are great maddie thank you uh, jada <laughs> thank you g thank you